What's up gamers? My name is Sayushi. You'll have to excuse me going into this video. I'm a little bit sick. I got a tickle in my throat and I look more tired than I am. I actually slept a lot. Yeah. So we're back again for Destiny. Really, really excited that the new season has actually started. As soon as you end up loading into the new season, uh, I actually already got this set of armor which was actually more powerful than the armor that I previously had, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I ended up actually putting a vanity color on it. Normally, it's all shiny silver and everything like that. Uh, but the thing that I'm most excited about is that there is the new seasonal ornament set. And even though, like, it's weird because I, I bought, like, the last uh, Season 8 stuff, and for some reason, my Season Pass is carrying over into Season 9. I don't know about that, but... Okay, uh, anyways, this right here, the, the ones that are kind of under my face, that's the new seasonal ornaments, and oh my gosh, they look beautiful, like, I, that's probably one of my favorite Titan sets I've seen so far, because honestly, I'm not sold on any of the ones that I've seen out of the cash shop or anything, I'm not against, like, buying vanity sets, uh, it's just that I haven't seen any that I particularly like, so we've got a new activity, which is saving a legendary hero, uh, we've got the Cabal kind of taking Osiris's sundial so they're traveling through time to make an alternate reality where they defeat the guardians type of thing it sounds really really cool uh, and it's a good thing that I know everything about the red war because I played through it uh, but we got that event going on uh, there's a bunch of pvp junk so I'm not going to experience that sorry I, I don't have any desire to play through pvp at all but if you end up coming over here and talking to Ikora she'll end up giving you uh, I, I think this is the new quest, a matter of time, so Ikora believes Osiris will be able My to explain the Red Legion's blah, 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 blah. They're all chilling in Mercury, right? Uh, so there's going to be all the new cash shop stuff as well, but more importantly, what we're going to be doing today is taking a look at the subclass overhauls, because they've actually made quite a change more specifically to the subclass that I main on my Titan, which is going to end up being the middle path right here, so the burning mole path. Uh, they have made changes to the top and bottom uh, subclasses, but... Uh, you know, I'm not really an expert in those subclasses. I know pretty much everything about this middle path. So that's the one that we're going to be focusing on today. You know, slowly over time, as I get the hang of the game, I'll experiment with different paths and stuff like that. Because they've actually changed all of the burning subclasses uh, for all of the characters. But as far as I read, the most impactful changes was actually to the Titans middle pathway. So I'm really excited about that. So just very briefly, we've got all these new fancy things in the store and everything. It's all, you know, it's all kind of standard stuff. It's really cool. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I might want this. I might want that because I really like the mall, dude. It's like so cool and just so badass in this game, right? Uh, but the biggest thing that I would say is a very small change, but it's a very cool one, is the fact that you can actually uh, cycle up multiple finishers. So all you gotta do uh, on PC, you use shift, on console, you use R3, and all you do is just favorite these finishers. And from then on, anytime you end up doing a finisher in battle, the game is just going to cycle through your favorites randomly, which I think that's great because otherwise up to this point, there wasn't really much of a reason to end up having multiple finishers, right? Like it's like you would just pick your favorites and that's it. Oh, and then out of an ornament box or whatever, uh, I ended up getting this thing. I don't know. I mean, I didn't have a I, I didn't have a gold version of them. So, hey, whatever. Uh, let me actually just hop into just a generic open world. Uh, let's go. Let's go to Mercury, actually, because there's a lot of changes going on here and try out uh, try out our new subclass abilities. Oh, and then, of course, the other big, big change to Mercury. We can finally use our freaking vehicles, man. I didn't even know that that was a thing because it's not like I explored much of this planet, but yeah, apparently we couldn't actually use our sparrows the entire time, but now we actually can, which, I mean, that's awesome, because seriously, travel time is a thing. Okay, we got a Vex guy over there. Let me actually just go through some of these changes on paper first with you guys. Uh, so the Hammer of Sol itself, which is going to end up being our ult, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get to try that out today a little bit later in the video, but the impact damage was actually decreased from 70 to 5. That is a huge decrease. Jesus. Okay. But the detonation damage, that was actually increased from 205 to 270. 
I don't know what the difference is between impact and detonation damage. Maybe they're talking about just using the right click ability. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, you know what? I gotta take care of these guys. Yeah, so the mall apparently has gotten a lot stronger as well. Uh, the pickup radius for it has changed too, so I'll have to check that out. Where's my, where's my mall? Oh, I already have it. Jeez, dude. What's your problem? Oh man, I keep on, like, I'm so used to trying to... Oh my, that is, that is such a better radius to pick it up. I keep on instinctively trying to turn around and pick it up because normally you had to pick up the mall by like specifically standing on it. Now we actually pick it up from that far away. So there it is. There we are. That's that's quite a difference of uh, distance. Like, my God, normally you'd have to pick it up specifically, but now we can actually be like one whole block over, just run past it, grab it and keep on killing. That is that is a huge change, man. That's a huge change. Okay, uh, anyways, the throwing hammer also has had its impact increased from 100 to 120. I, I guess that means that it's just a lot stronger. Uh, the hammer of soul changes as well. It says that, note, these changes also affect the bottom tree of Sunbreaker. Okay, so we've got a couple other things that we've changed with the subclass as well. So Roaring Flames, which is uh, kills with your solar abilities, increase those abilities damage and it stacks up to three times. Uh, that has actually had a bit of a change in its damage just being utterly increased. So for PvE, which is just fighting mobs, we've got it increased from 20% uh, to 30% per stack, mind you. So that's that's an extra like 30% total. Uh, and then in PvP, it goes from 10% to 25%. And the duration has also been increased I'm being attacked, man. It, the duration's also been increased, apparently, from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. So that's pretty cool. That's just kind of a passive ability that we've, uh, you know, dealt with in time. That just means that we're just going to end up being that much stronger, right? My hammer bros. Uh, and then we've got the burning mall has had a huge increase. So it's increased the idle super duration from 21.2 seconds to 28.5. Thank the gods. Because... There is one thing that I noticed very distinctly between playing on my Titan and playing on my Warlock, and that's that the super on my Warlock seemed to last a lot longer. You know, it didn't last nearly as long whenever I ended up playing on the Titan, so it's nice that it's going to last a lot longer. Uh, the light attack has had the super energy cost reduced from 5% to 3%. That's great because otherwise I would be spinning around like a freak and then you would just drain your super super duper quick. Uh, they tuned the movement and player feedback. So apparently they've changed it so that we're supposed to be able to continuously spin around uh, an enemy without having to let go of our attack. So let's actually go try that out right now. But the heavy attack has also had uh, a slightly reduced speed of, ham uh, of heavy slam projectile. So the projectile itself is going to end up being a lot slower. Uh, they also have the tracking radius of the heavy slam has been reduced as well, so it's not gonna yeah, arc as much over on certain enemy types, I guess. Let's just try this out on this big boy right here. They increase the height of the projectile. Oh, he's dead already. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we'll find something else. It's okay. I hear more enemies behind us. But I want to read through these first. So they increase the height of the projectile hitbox to more easily hit airborne opponents. That's actually really nice. Uh, and then they increase super energy cost for your right click from 6% to 8% and slightly increased terminal explosion size. Okay, well, let's try it out. So here's the spin attack. What happens if I just, oh, if I just spam it, you can just spin to win. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. And the ult definitely lasts a lot longer. It really does. Okay, the explosion. Yeah, normally it would like stop right by an enemy, but I guess that's kind of an example right there of it being an airborne attack, kind of. I'm guessing that they're talking about high, uh, enemies that are much higher in the air, but that's, that's pretty cool, man. That's actually a very welcome change. Like just in general, the spin attack is going to be that much more useful, I feel, because it was, uh, it was a bit of a problem in all honesty. 
Yeah, and I think that pretty much covers it for our subclass abilities, the ones that I mostly use anyways. So there's definitely a lot more things that are in the changelog for sure. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can read up on it yourselves, just because there is so, so many changes to many, many things. Uh, let me see if there's anything more noteworthy that we got to take a look at. Uh, but I do want to let you guys know that, again, they've tweaked and kind of perfected a lot of the sun subclass abilities for every character it's not just the titan it's just that this tree more particularly was very underpowered apparently compared to a lot of the other classes uh so it's really really nice that they ended up buffing that one and i'm just happy about it just because that's pretty much my main yeah so they've made a lot of changes to a whole bunch of the exotics as well uh, but more notably, I wanted to talk about the power and progression and then the quests and bounties. We'll kind of, we're not going to spend too much time on them. We balance some sources of XP on Mercury to align with newer uh, destinations. So I guess they just buffed Mercury in general, kind of fixed a lot of things with it. Uh, fixed issue where some chests weren't granting any XP. Fixed an issue where Iron Banner bounties were rewarding more XP than other weekly bounties. Oh well. Uh, the XP required to level up the seasonal artifact has been slightly adjusted so some levels have had a much higher increase in xp required from the previous level and this increase uh, has been distributed throughout all levels to kind of smooth out the progression curve with leveling up that little freak I'm just heading back to the tower because I was getting way too distracted. So quests and bounties, this is something that's going to be more interesting to me because the power progression is good, but a lot of that's got to do with people that are actually at the end game. Quests and bounties is something that I can experience very easily. So they've merged strike, crucible, and gambit objectives on the gunsmith's weekly bounty field uh, calibration. Uh, into one single objective that shares progress from all sources. That's great because a lot of times the gunsmith was giving quests for PvP and I don't really touch the PvP yet. I might eventually, but I don't really care to. I, I don't know. It's just a little too weird and competitive for me. I just, I prefer fighting as a team rather than fighting against, right? But I don't know. That's just me. Uh, but it's nice that we can actually just start getting some of the gunsmith's actual progression and not having to worry about like where we're progressing it and stuff, right? Okay, I don't know what he's giving me now, but I guess I'll take it. Yeah, just precision kills, calibration kills in general. Uh, it's targets and strikes gambit. Okay, that's actually awesome. They also added repeatable bounties at the gunsmith. So that's really, really cool because now we can just focus on actually getting some of his quests done more regularly. Uh, they added a new mode specific daily crucible bounties. So there's going to be one per day selected from uh, full time playlists and active rotators. You guys will know more about that than me. Reduce the completion requirements of several daily and repeatable crucible bounties. Again, something that doesn't really affect me, but you guys I'm sure are interested in it. They removed grenade and melee bounties from the crucible bounty repeatable pool. So, I mean, that's great because those always take way too long. I mean, I'm guessing in PvP, you're not meleeing a million people and grenades are already a hard enough time for me to deal with when I'm doing strikes, let alone uh, if you're in PvP trying to get kills with those, just no thank you. Uh, after the Vex invasion ended on the moon, the number of Vex kills required to cleanse the essence of servitude has been reduced from 100 kills to 30 kills. Good God, these quests are going to just be that much easier to do. Man, alive. So they also removed weapon requirement and changed objective display to a float instead of a percentage on Ariana's Vow Catalyst Pursuit. I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> you guys will know. Uh, and then I guess maybe, uh, maybe one of the last things that we'll do right here, we'll go through the season pass changes. So the season pass now displays its active bonuses in a new season pass bonuses section visible on the main season pass window in the director. Uh, I'm guessing what they're talking about is just these right here down here. So the season eight nostalgic engram has been retired and in its place players can now obtain the new season nine fond memories engram uh so that's going to end up being where are they that, that's these things right here so it's just kind of the new loot boxes right and they can end up having a various amount of different vanity items and junk like that these are kind of all the special legendary ones which this guy looks kind of cool okay he looks kind of stupid this one looks kind of cool 
That looks like a lifesaver. It just looks delicious. I want to eat it. Uh, and then they also fixed an issue that prevents season pass armor from displaying the correct stats and energy type when previewed anyways. Uh, and then there's a change for the Korean uh, region only, which I mean, that doesn't affect me. So, so there's obviously a lot of other things to talk about. But uh, one thing I wanted to talk about specifically, because this one's actually big and affects us all, is that the cost of slotting a weapon mod has been reduced from 5,000 glim to 500 yikes that's a lot cheaper dude that means we can just mod stuff all willy-nilly without having to worry about it i mean we kind of already could anyways honestly speaking but uh, yeah anyways i think that's gonna cover it for today everybody because uh, half of this stuff i don't even know what it's changed most of all i'm just excited about those titan changes and even though this armor looks cool I'm really looking forward to those other ornaments. I really can't wait to get them. I don't know how high in the season I have to actually be to get them. It looks like we actually can get... Nope, that's... that's. We already have that. I don't know why that's supposed to be a big deal. Oh, well. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Smash like, sub for more, you know, more information here by somebody who doesn't really know much about Destiny yet. We've only just scratched the surface as this patch notes has already completely dumbfounded me with so many of its changes uh, but more notably is the changes that we've had to the fire subclasses and those are awesome anyways i gotta get my strikes done now gamers so sign on and stay epic